بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيبة الله It's important for us to pay attention to one of the most important parts of our body which is often neglected and that is the heart and the Prophet mentioned that verily قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إن في جزد مضغة إذا صلح صلح جزد كله وإذا فسد فسد جزد كله ألا وهي قل. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said that verily in the heart is a morsel of flesh that if it is good then the whole body is good and if it is sick then the whole body is sick and verily it's the heart because the heart is where we have that ibadat qalbiya uh, the worship of the heart, that internal worship, things like taqwa, things like khawf or raja, you know, by, by fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the hope for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, and the uh, comfort in the heart when doing ibadah, all of these are affairs of the heart, and these are affairs of the most importance, of the greatest importance. And so this is why the believer has to give, the believer in fact, a characteristic of the believer is that they give more time to their heart than their physical. This is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An Abi Hurayrata radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna allaha la yandhru ila adsadikum, wa la ila surakum, wa lakin yandhru ila qulubakum wa a'malakum, huwa hu muslim. The Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, it was reported on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Verily Allah does not look at your bodies nor your appearance but rather he looks at your hearts and your deeds. So this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shows us the importance that the believer should give to their heart. And some of the ways that we can begin to sal uh, to give salvation to our heart or to solve the crises that we experience in the heart and in our lives is by giving attention to the heart. And some of the ways in which we can do that is first by reading the Quran, reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, integrating the Quran in your life, spending some time every day because you are in need of that. That is what you need for your spiritual growth. That is what you need to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what you need to make the deen and actualize the deen as a reality in your life. And this comes through dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best dhikr is by the Quran. Secondly, another way in which we can revive our hearts from being dead is that by dhikr uh, mutlaq, making dhikr in general, saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, allahu akbar, reminding ourselves and reminding others and having your tongue moist with dhikr by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. And why did the salaf say moist, having your tongue moist with dhikr? Because the dhikr is not in, just internally, but rather it's on the tongue that it shows us the importance of actually moving your tongue in your mouth when you are making remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illa and subhanaka inni kuntu min al-balimi. Make it as much a dhikr of, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to revive yourself spiritually. An another important way of reviving your heart and protecting your heart is by also reading the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and seeking knowledge. Because if you seek knowledge for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, in accordance with uh, the madhab of the Salaf, then you will fall under the statement of the Salaf when they said that Talib al-Alim, Talib al-Jannah, that seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. Because in fact, your intention will be to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And your intention will be fulfilled if your intention is, is just that. 
that it is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is to lift the ignorance from yourself and lift the ignorance from your community and raise up your community. So if you do this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is also a revival of the heart. By the more knowledge, the better you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on al wa fiqh wa basira. And the Prophet sallallahu said, May Allah be khayran yafaqaw fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Man salata tariqan yal talmasuhu bihi alman sahala lahu lahu tariqan ala jannah. That whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path of jannah. So what do we get from this hadith? Those are some of the ways in which we can revive our hearts and protect our hearts. What we learn from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that it shows us that our physical appearance is not the utmost importance. Yes, we should be clean. Yes, we should take care of ourselves physically and be healthy. However, the spiritual health is the most important thing. So the mu'min gives uh, precedence to those spiritual matters. Another benefit of this hadith is uh, it shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only looks to our heart, but He looks to our deeds as well so that we should strive our utmost to do righteous deeds. And there are many ways to do righteous deeds, from serving our parents, to reading the Quran, to making dhikr, to being kind to the people, to giving da'wah, to uh, saying a kind word, to moving a harm from the road, to uh, making hajj or umrah, to praying extra, to fasting extra, to doing all the acts of ibadah. Those all funder, fall under deeds. And Iman in Islam is comprised of three things, Ahabatifillah. The first thing is it's comprised of your uh, your actions of the heart. And you like your Iman, your belief. And secondly, it's comprised of the actions of your limbs. And that comes to the good deeds that you're doing to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we were just talking about, that Allah looks to. And the third uh, aspect of Iman is the statement of the tongue. So that can be dhikr, that can be saying a good word, that can be pronouncing the shahada, and all of those uh, ibadat qawliya, those things which are on the tongue. So it shows us, ahabatifillah, that we must give precedence to our hearts and our deeds. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.